Number 53, letter A. If a single slit produces a first minimum at 14.5 degrees, at what angle is the second order minimum? All right, so for letter A, what we need to do is we'll set up two equations. We got D sine theta is equal to M lambda, and we'll call this, why don't we call this all D1, theta 1, M1, and wavelength 1, all right? And let's set up a second equation we'll call D2 sine then of theta 2 is going to be equal to M2 times lambda 2. Now, <clears throat> what we're trying to do is we're trying to say at what angle is the second order minimum. So they told us the first order minimum. In other words, they told us theta 1 and they told us M1, right? So let's just plug that in. So this is sine then of 14.5 is going to be equal to 1 multiplied by wavelength 1. Okay, same thing for the second equation, though they are now asking us for theta 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight that right here. Keep keep that in mind. The m now it's the second order, so that's why that's 2, and the wavelength I also don't know. However, though, when I compare these two equations, what do you know about the relationship between, let's say, this a slit width, went too far, and that slit width. What do you know? Well, is it the same slit? Yes, it's the same experiment. So these will essentially cancel. So uh, before I just cancel them out, just get rid of the subscripts. They're just D. We're going to make them the same. Okay, not D1, D2, but they're just D. And what about the wavelength? <clears throat> Does it sound like the, this light is changing? No, right? So the wavelength is also just lambda. Get rid of the one and the two because they are the same. So now what we can do here, and I'll draw a little line to color code it. All right, they're also the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ratio. In other words, I'm going to write this equation. So D sine 14.5 is equal to lambda divided then by, and basically now what I'm going to do is put underneath this the second equation, D sine theta 2 is equal to now 2 lambda. And what do you notice will happen? <coughs> well, the d's will cancel and the lambdas will cancel. And what are we left with? Well, we're left with now sine of then 14.5 over then sine of theta 2, which is what we want to find is equal to 1 over 2. Remember, this is what I want to find. And now I'm looking at this. I'm like, hooray, one equation, one unknown. Right? So all we now need to do, do a little cross multiplication. Let's get this. Whoop, don't take, don't take the division sign with you. We're going to do multi cross multiply that on up, cross multiply the two on up, just put that in parentheses. Now we can get rid of this little thing. We can also get rid of that. The one doesn't really mean anything. And here's now the formula. Okay, however, we're almost there, right? We don't want sine of theta two, we want to find just theta two. So what are you going to do to both sides? You've seen this now plenty of times. You have to take the inverse sine of both sides. Okay, so you take the inverse sine of that. And I would also take the inverse sine of this. The reason why I don't show it a lot of the times is because that just will cancel. The two signs cancel and you're just left with now theta 2. All right. And there is now your formula. So all you have to do is now plug in, plug, it, plug that into the calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode, otherwise your answer will be in radians. So inverse sine of 2 multiplied by the sine then of 14.5. It's going to be 30. Degree. Uh, so theta 2 is going to be about 30 degrees, and I guess yeah, 30.1 degrees. And that takes care of letter A then. Okay. So it wants to know now what is the uh, third order minimum, right? What is the angle, excuse me, of the third order minimum? So what do you think I would do here? What's the only thing that's going to change now? Well, the only thing that's going to change is there's not a 2 here anymore. There's just the 3, right? That's a 3 now. And this is... Uh, you could still call it theta 2 if you want, but I'm going to call that theta 3. So that's the only thing that's changing now. So get rid of this. This now becomes theta 3. Okay, and then this 2 is no longer a 2. It is a 3. So that's how that changes. So simple though, right? We don't really need to rewrite everything, especially when you're on the test. If you get a question like this, you want to be able to do it quickly. So inverse sine of 3 now times sine of 14.5. And this is now 48, so this is now 48.7, uh, I guess, degrees, <clears throat> right? And now it says, is there a fourth order minimum? Well, why don't we see? So we get rid of the three now, and what are we going to plug in there? We're going to plug in now a four down there. So this three, and now it's getting messy, so now I'm going to start erasing, all right? So now what happens is that this becomes a four, 
this would become a four. And what I would do is I would plug this in. Guess what? If you get an answer, you got a fourth order minimum. If you get an error sign, you don't have a fourth order minimum. So inverse sine of four times then sine of 14.5. What do you get? Up, oh, error. Right? It doesn't work. There is no fourth order minimum. So theta four doesn't exist. Okay, it doesn't equal anything. Um, you know, you could also multiply this on the inside, four times 14.5, four times, well, sine of 14.5. So four times the sine of 14.5. And you realize that that is 1.0015. This, this can never, inside of an inverse sine, it cannot be larger than one. It can't be. All right, that's going back to unit circle stuff. So, all right, guys. So thanks a lot for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hopefully that helps. And uh, if you can subscribe, we really appreciate it. And we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.